So welcome to Unit 9, Developmental Psychology. We are on Module 51, Physical uh, Adolescence, Physical and Cognitive Development. This is a really short module. Um, there are only two learning targets. The first one is define adolescence and discuss how the physical changes during this period affect developing teens. And the second one is describe adolescent cognitive and moral development according to Piaget, Kohlberg, and later researchers. So we hear the term adolescence all the time. Well, what is adolescence? Adolescence is the transition. Sorry about my dogs. Okay, sorry about that. Um, what is adolescence? It's the transition period from childhood to adulthood, extending from puberty to independence. So it's a time when many teens are craving social acceptance, but often feeling socially disconnected. Um, Research shows that three and four friendships that start in seventh grade dissolve by the time adolescents complete eighth grade. So after 30 years, many who grew up in independence, fostering Western cultures, look back on their teenage years and they think, oh, it's not something I would want to relive. It's a time when their peer social approval was so very, very, very important for them. Their sense of direction was sort of in flux. And they felt alienation from their parents a lot at that time. So a lot of people, especially in Western cultures, look back on their teen years as times that were really, really um, tumultuous times that they wouldn't necessarily want to relive. Um, what is puberty? Puberty is the period of sexual maturation during which a person becomes fully capable of reproducing. Just as the earlier life stages, the sequence of physical changes in puberty um, uh, it's far more predictable than their timing. So there's different onsets of timing for puberty, but it goes in a predictable stage. Some girls start growth spurts and start the onset of puberty quite early, even as early as like age nine. And some boys don't start puberty until as late as age 16. That's all a normal range. Everybody's different and there's quite a bit of biological influence there. How does early maturation impact boys? For boys, early maturation has mixed effects. Boys who are stronger and more athletic during their early teen years tend to be more popular, self-assured and independent, though they are also higher at a higher risk for alcohol use, delinquency, and premature sexual activity. Now for girls, maturation can, early maturation can be a challenge and even, even more of a challenge. If a young girl's body and hormone fed feelings are out of sync with her emotional maturity, um, she may begin associating with older adolescents, suffer teasing or sexual harassment and experience increased rumination, like thinking over and over again and have increased levels of anxiety and or depression. How does the brain change during puberty? An adolescent's brain is still very much a work in progress. Until puberty, brain cells increase their connections, almost like trees. Think about trees, like a um, dendritic arbor, right? Like trees growing more roots and branches. Then during adolescence becomes a selective pruning of unused neurons and connections. As teens mature, their frontal lobes also continue to develop. The continuing growth of myelin, if you remember back to our biological basis of behavior modules, um, myelin is the fatty tissue that forms around the axons and speeds up those neurotransmissions, enabling better communication with other brain regions. These developments bring improved judgment, impulse control, and long-term planning. And during this time, you know, the brain really is still developing. And for many, brain development won't, um, the you know, brains won't be full, fully mature until like the mid 20s. Okay, so developing impulse control. Surveys of more than 7,000 American 12 to 24 year olds reveal that sensation seeking peaks in the middle teens, with impulse control developing more slowly as frontal lobes mature. You can take a look at that image right there. How do adolescents think? Well, during, during the early teen years, reasoning is often self-focused, turned inward. Adolescents might think that their private experiences are unique, something parents just could not possibly understand. But mom, you don't really know how it feels to be in love. Capable of thinking about their own thinking and about other people's thinking, they also begin to imagine what other people are thinking about them. 
Um, when adolescents achieve the intellectual summit that P John Piaget called formal the formal operational stage, they are able to start thinking in more abstract terms. Their abstract reasoning tools develop to a much greater extent. Um, they might start to think about what is ideally possible and care that, compare that with their imperfect reality of not only just themselves, but also with society, of society and their parents. Older teens may debate things like human nature, good and evil, truth and justice. So although on opposite sides of the immigration policy debate, these teens in these images um, are all demonstrating their ability to think logically about abstract topics. According to Piaget, these teens would be in their final cognitive stage of formal operations. So moral development research, what do we know there? Well, one of the names you should be thinking about in terms of research and moral development is you should associate it with Lawrence Kohlberg, who did a lot of work in, in this area, and kind of took off from um, some of Piaget's ideas. He posed moral dilemmas. For example, the most famous one was the Heinz dilemma, which questioned whether a person should steal medicine to save the loved one's life. And he asked children, adolescents, and adults whether the action was right or wrong. His analysis of their answers led him to, to propose three basic levels of moral thinking. Pre-conventional, post-conventional, I'm sorry, pre-conventional, conventional, and post-conventional. So here's a little tip if you're taking the AP exam. Kohlberg's is an important stage theory. It's very important to understand that the stage you're in doesn't depend on what you decide to do, like if you decide to steal the medicine or not steal the medicine, it depends on why you decide to do it. So here's a little more about Kohlberg's stages of moral development. Um, and generally speaking, the pre-conventional stage is um, before about age nine, and the focus is self-interest, obeying rules, avoiding punishment, gaining rewards. So for example, someone in this stage would say, if you save your dying wife, you'll be a hero. So the conventional morality would be, uh, most people that are in early adolescence would be in that stage. Um, the focus is uphold laws and rules to gain social approval or maintain social or order. So for example, if you steal the drug for her, everyone will think you're a criminal. And then the final stage, adolescence and beyond, the focus is actions reflect belief in basic rights and self-defined ethical principles. So the example would be saying something like, people have a right to live. Okay, so Kohlberg claimed that these levels form a moral ladder. What are the criticisms of Kohlberg? Well, he know, he, critics have noted that his post-conventional stage is actually culturally limited, appearing mostly among people from large societies that praise individualism. So there's some cultural differences between the way people um, from different types of cultures, depending on whether they're more individualistic or collectivist societies, how they answer the questions that Kohlberg posed. So Carol Gilligan also had some criticisms. She and her colleagues suggests that the ladder of moral development describes Western individualistic males more than relationship-oriented females. She challenged Kohlberg's findings, which were drawn from data collected by wealthy middle-class males, um, and that did not reflect female moral development. Uh, psychologist Jonathan Haidt, who's a contemporary um, renowned psychologist currently, um, he believes that much of our morality is rooted in moral intuition, sort of our quick gut feelings um, are effectively laden intuitions. According to this view, the mind makes moral judgments in the same way it makes aesthetic judgments quickly and automatically. Feelings of disgust or elation trigger moral reasoning, says Haidt. So we are already back to our reviews, our learning target reviews. So. Adolescence is the transition period from childhood to adulthood, extending from puberty to independence, social independence. For boys, early maturation has mixed effect, effects, some positive and negative things. For girls, early maturation is more challenging generally. The brain's frontal lobes mature and myelin growth increases during adolescence in the early 20s, enabling improved judgment, impulse control, and long-term planning. Jean Piaget theorized that adolescents develop a capacity for formal operations, and this development is the foundation for moral judgment. Kohlberg, you know, moving on from, from Piaget's research, proposed a stage theory of moral reasoning, from a pre-conventional morality of self-interest to a conventional morality concerned with upholding laws and social rules, 
to a post-conventional morality of universal ethical principles. Finally, other researchers believe that morality lies in moral intuition and moral action as well as thinking. That was Jonathan Haidt's idea. Some critics argue that Kohlberg's post-conventional level represents morality from the perspective of individualistic cultures. So there are some criticisms um, of Kohlberg's theory. And that is it. Thank you for listening.